Hello and welcome to Loop's Regional Resiliency Report. This month, we're speaking with Joe Ruth from Sparrow Hospital about their $800 million capital plan, which will include some exciting expansions of their facilities here in the Lansing region. But first, we'll speak with Bob Tredice, President and CEO of LEAP, and Keith Lambert, uh, COO of LEAP, about LEAP's work convening um, a MedTech Advisory Committee and creating a MedTech hub here in the Lansing region. So take it away, guys. Yeah, thank you, Caitlin. And But the big thank you we reserve to Sparrow, their board of directors, their executive leadership, and all of their employees for making a really historic and important decision and choice to invest once again in our Lansing region, their hometown. And we could not be happier about this. As you mentioned, Caitlin, this is an $800 million total investment. It's a series of buildings and uh, programs and services spread across our three county region and even a little bit beyond the three county region. But I think it's fair to say that one of the central parts of this investment is a new five story tower on Michigan Avenue right in the heart of downtown Lansing that we're just super thrilled and excited about as well. I think it's important to note though that these decisions are tough. These are, there is a lot of risk involved and I, I and we try to remind everybody all the time that businesses have a choice uh, to invest here or there, to invest this amount of money instead of that amount of money. And I think this is a, 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 a local company, Sparrow, that has made a decision that we are a great place to invest. It, it shows the kind of confidence that they have not only in their hometown community, not only in Michigan on Michigan Avenue, but um, throughout the three county region. But I think Keith, it also demonstrates their interest and confidence in, in what is clearly our emerging uh, sort of healthcare, medical arts, med tech uh, ecosystem that is clearly here and that LEAP is playing a leadership role um, to, to put all the pieces together, ranging from our, you know, people don't know that we're a major hub in the United States for medical device manufacturing, for instance, that we're the particle accelerator capital of North America, that we have amazing biotechnology kinds of companies. Of course, we have four medical schools at MSU, the nursing school at Lansing Community College. I mean, we have all of the pieces uh, to really make us a very robust and serious global player in this med tech or healthcare. Uh, it's one and the same in my mind these days, uh, it, kind of ecosystem for our region. So we're super excited. Of course, let me mention too, the $600 million brand new hospital and cancer center that McLaren is building in our region too. When you add the two health systems together, that's $1.4 billion of new investment in our region. It'll be certainly a, a dramatic increase and the kind of quality care that we already are receiving, but will be receiving into the future. Um, and uh, we just could not say thank you to Sparrow enough for all these reasons, Keith. But I, in part, this is just another great jolt to our uh, med tech vision for our region, right? It is. It is, Bob. That's exactly right. And seeing Sparrow double down in the way that they are uh, and invest in a big way uh, in their hometown is, is really inspiring. And it's part of this kind of greater trend that we've seen. And, you know, you, you talked about medical device manufacturing, uh, just looking at medical device manufacturing and pharmaceutical manufacturing, our, in, our region has tripled in size and employment over the last 20 years. And that's as the country has only grown at 6%. So we're seeing something special happening here. And to have our health systems both step up in a, in a big way with, you know, new facilities that are going to provide the best care available. And they're also very interested in R&D and commercialization and innovation, uh, which is, is going to be very critical to the work that we're doing with our MedTech advisory group moving forward. Uh, we really do have all of the pieces. And I, I think LEAP has a, a big mission, big job to do in terms of bringing them all together and even, you know, helping them to kind of heighten themselves and, and coalesce around each other. And, and you know, use this kind of special energy and investment and all the good things happening and, and really make us into one of those kind of super med tech clusters of the country. And, and I think you know, we're well on our way, but it's still kind of in its infancy, uh, but all the, all the right things are happening. It's really exciting to see. 
Well, two, two years ago, as you know, Keith, um, we put together, LEAP put together a MedTech uh, advisory committee, and that is chaired by Dr. Norm Beauchamp from Michigan State University and Mike Zamara from NioWave. And there are a number of other private sector leading sort of medical types of industries and businesses that are on that committee. And as part of that, LEAP wrote a year ago, a $1.1 million uh, economic development agency, federal government uh, grant to allow us to work in a very intense way over the next two years, continuing our efforts to put this puzzle together and, uh, and fill in the gaps of sort of a supplier chain, uh, if you want to look at it that way in this ecosystem and really continue to build on the momentum that we have in med tech and not only respond to the pandemic, of course, but to innovate, as you suggested, and uh, to commercialize, uh, work on tech transfers and, and uh, you know, just continue to, to um, create an overall ecosystem that will automatically attract even more med tech uh, and healthcare related industry to our region, creating, by the way, really good paying jobs across the board, a wide variety of jobs. Yeah, definitely. And that, you know, that group's been critical. I, I think when you think about the pandemic, you, you hear the word resiliency a lot uh, and you see these health systems that they're, they're building uh, with resiliency, literal, you know, construction of new buildings that will have better efficiencies, you know, better uh, ability for them to really take care and protect against things like a pandemic. Uh, but you can also innovate into resiliency. And that's, again, in terms of processes, in terms of embracing new technologies, new devices, things like that. Uh, and there's a lot of interest on that front. So it, it's definitely, you know, a, a time where everyone's reevaluating how care is provided. And it, it's, again, exciting to have the health systems intimately involved. But the leadership of MSU is going to be critical for us as well. Uh, and they, you know, are truly a global network and they bring in talent from all over the world. We talk a lot about the effort of bringing in physicists and scientists from all over the world. That facility is opening uh, more robustly next year. The Clarence opening their new health system right on, you know, adjacent to MSU's campus uh, in in March, which is incredible. So like all these things are happening, and our our EDA grant is going to be kind of building the strategy around all this. But we don't want it to just be another economic development plan. We really, I, I've been talking about it, and I want to talk with the consultants that we bring on to help us as kind of a tactical game plan where. You know, all the players know their role, they know what they have to do, and the work is actually being done. Um, so we're definitely excited about that. And we also have a lot of capacity to bring on the med tech innovation expertise. And, and that's going to be huge to be able to bring on consultants and actual staff at LEAP uh, to, to help carry this work forward. Because we know that there's so many programs, so many things going on right now, capacity is becoming more and more limited. So finding opportunities to bring on capacity to do this work is, is absolutely critical. Well, and you know, finally, Keith, I think there's uh, really a great placemaking element to Sparrow's announcement as well. Um, for really 15 years now, Leap and, and others uh, for sure have um, identified Michigan Avenue as sort of the backbone of of the entire three county region as far as a. Uh, you know, the spine, if you will, of economic development activities. I mean, it is a very unique corridor of a few miles uh, to any corridor in the United States. I mean, on one end, you have one of the great universities in the world in a great downtown, East Lansing, Michigan State University. A few miles down, you have the capital city of Michigan in a great downtown in Lansing. And of course, square at the heart of that is Sparrow and that health system. And of course, overall, Sparrow employs at some uh, 5,000 or close to that kind of figure. I mean, they are a if not the, a major, major, major employer in the city of Lansing and throughout the region. Again, these are a wide variety of jobs and tend to be quite good paying. But, you know, to continue to develop Michigan Avenue like we have with Red Cedar Project and Skyview, and of course the uh, Pat Gillespie's, uh, the, the uh, grocery store, the urban grocery store, uh, City Market and, you know, the Meyer and, and the, the new hotel I, and, and the, apartments in the stadium, the outfield. I mean, we could go on and on, but there are all kinds of really nice projects that enhance the neighborhood, um, really attract music and more music and culture to the, to the corridor. 
but tall buildings where appropriate really matter along there as well. Uh, I could even extend our argument all the way into downtown East Lansing, of which LEAP has had a very big role in over the last couple of years. We had to demonstrate to the world that East Lansing is a, you know, a, a really great college town. And though I'm convinced that those tall buildings it, it demonstrate to incoming students, to incoming professors, um, healthcare related or not, that uh, th this is a, a growing, prosperous, visionary kind of region. So adding another five-story tower to Michigan Avenue in the heart of all that is, is just really a, a great, uh, another placemaking kind of achievement. Well, in conclusion, we, of course, want to come back full circle and just give a huge thank you to Sparrow. Uh, Jim Dover, the president and CEO of Sparrow, his executive team, the board of directors, and of course, all the employees of Sparrow for having the confidence um, and, and making the choice, uh, taking the risk of investing at this historic level of $800 million throughout our region, including that magnificent five-story uh, tower that will go on Michigan Avenue. But this is a big vote of confidence in our region and our vision for the future with healthcare and medtech and really, frankly, all of the kinds of growth um, that, that uh, LEAP has been working on. Let's not forget that we recruited and landed McKesson, um, which is a very significant pharmaceutical distribution firm. And this is gonna be their absolute state-of-the-art facility in America. Uh, right here in Delhi Township. So it's all adding up, but today is about thanking Sparrow, uh, one of our great hometown companies, employing so many people and so many jobs and, and making a great new announcement. Thank you to Sparrow. Awesome. And with that, let's go and chat with Joe Ruth. To start out, uh, tell us about the $800 million investment announcement from Sparrow and what it means for Sparrow's continued growth as a regional healthcare leader. Uh, we're really exciting, excited about the announcement of our $800 million capital plan. Um, you know, the Sparrow campus has really become kind of a centerpiece for Michigan Avenue. Um, we have uh, two great bookends that we always like to look at, the Capitol building on one end, the Michigan State campus on the other. And uh, we, we uh, have done a lot lately, you know, over the last couple of decades in making this a destination for healthcare. Um, there's a lot of component parts, the $800 million. Some of it is regional in nature um, because we've gone from being a small community hospital to a health system that covers, you know, a uh, five county region. And so there are dollars for those community hospitals as well. Uh, but the, the bulk of that money will include a new five story patient tower uh, directly to the north of the 10 story tower that we opened up back in 2007. It seems like only yesterday. And yet uh, our growth and success has actually outgrown the physical facilities that we've got. And so, you know, we'll address some additional needs in terms of expanding our emergency department, you know, which we quadrupled in size back in 2007, figuring that we're never going to need that much space. And as soon as it was brought online, it was filled up. Mm -hmm. um, so that patient tower will, again, continue to advance our innovation and growth. Uh, it'll address some of those issues in terms of um, more private rooms, uh, et cetera. And so that is one key piece. That'll take a little bit longer, if you will, to finish the construction and bring online. Another really exciting component is to enhance our platform for outpatient surgery. And uh, that construction piece will be directly to the west of the main campus. Across Pennsylvania, we have our medical supply office that uh, will move down the street to the Frandor Shopping Center. We're excited about that. That'll actually be a very easy spot for patients to, to get to, perhaps easier than that really busy corner that it's on now. Um, so that we're excited about that component part. And uh, there was an empty uh, information technology building as well. And so uh, one of those is down, the other one will uh, follow. And uh, so on the corner of Michigan and Pennsylvania, we'll have a state-of-the-art ambulatory surgery center. Um, the last time I checked, it should be uh, three stories tall, although there's a lot of debate in terms of how all of that comes together uh, with the uh, surgery center on the top floor and then uh, additional physician office space on floors one and two. And so the design work is more or less done with that. And now it's a matter of uh, clearing the site 
and uh, getting prepared. A lot of that construction will happen uh, you know, early next spring, but it, it's ongoing right now in terms of site prep. Um, so you touched on this um, briefly as we were talking about the um, five-story um, add-on that's going to happen as part of this investment. Um, so how does uh, this capital plan support the continued improvement of uh, kind of the Lansing region's urban core, that Michigan Avenue corridor? We think it's important to support the city that we've been in for 125 years. And so as we continue to create uh, more services and more jobs, we hope that that continues to invigorate the local economy. We hope that, you know, uh, our caregivers uh, live in the neighborhood, live close to us, that uh, as people come into this community seeking care, they uh, you know, use the local uh, hotels that have sprung up, up and down the corridor, uh, eat at some of the new restaurants that continue to flourish. And uh, we, we see that as part of our ongoing responsibility to the community. Awesome. Uh, what part of the project are you personally most excited for? Um, well, both of those two are really exciting. Probably the most uh, important, one of our key focus areas at Sparrow is access to care. And we continue to look at the region in terms of gaps and where there isn't easy access for patients. And uh, believe it or not, one of our larger population centers uh, at the corner of Jolly and Okemos Road out in mm -hmm. Okemos, there's just not a lot of healthcare out in that portion of our area. And yet a lot of people live out there. There's a large uh, senior, uh, how, you know, senior uh, healthcare uh, skilled nursing facility out there. And they have to drive a long way sometimes for that. So we, in, in addition to these two buildings in Michigan Avenue, uh, we are working to open a uh, freestanding emergency center. And there will be a large primary care physician practice as a part of that building that'll be right on Jolly Road. We think that will also really make a difference uh, of, of access in that area. And off that busy 96 corridor, we can pull patients from uh, the east, the west, the south, um, there um, and kind of expands our service more to that uh, southeast uh, quadrant of our service area. So that one's probably more innovative. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the rest is, is kind of uh, what we've always done. There will be significant enhancements to, to both the tower and the surgery center, but this is kind of the, I would say the fun one, if you will, right? <laughs> and in addition, that $800 million covers a lot of growth and innovation. Our community hospitals that while they're not in Lansing proper, they actually help feed into uh, our health center for the, 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 the more specialized care that we deliver here. So their growth development and success actually also has a, a synergistic benefit to the Lansing area. And so we'll continue to help them grow. Um, they have all done an exceptional job, proud of the health system in total in terms of the pandemic response. And uh, I think you know we, we've, we've gotten a lot of press out of that. We're very proud. That just reflects our role in the community. Those community hospitals are just as important to you know, St. John's and Carson City and Ionia and Charlotte as Sparrow is to Lansing. It's a core, it's a part of the fabric of those communities and their success does the same thing there that it attracts businesses because there's healthcare in town. You know, it supports uh, ongoing economic growth. And so um, we take that role very seriously and all of these different projects are really geared to continuing to advance uh, the care that we provide. Awesome. Is there anything else that you'd like our viewers to know about the capital plan, about Sparrow, about healthcare? <laughs> <laughs> um, we continue to be very diligent working our way through the pandemic, but we're very excited to see um, it seems like almost a weekly announcement coming out of LEAP that uh, mm -hmm. there's another large employer, that there, there's other activity. Um, mm -hmm. As much as we're proud about our role, uh, I always say if healthcare is the largest employer in the region, the region's probably got a problem, right? We are here <laughs> to serve those employees of other uh, organizations and make it a robust place that we all can live and raise our families. And so we want to be a leading component, a part to that, but we're hoping that what we deliver here is an attractor for both businesses and people to continue to come to the Lansing region. And so um, 
full speed ahead. We, we, the, <laughs> the, the, the pandemic doesn't seem to want to go away as quickly as we are all hoping it would. Um, it'll probably be a bigger part of our lives than we want it to be, but that can't stop us um, from continuing to move forward. You know, this, this capital plan probably would have come forward at least a year earlier uh, if we hadn't been uh, having to kind of redirect all of our efforts to keeping the community safe during that time. So um, this for us is a symbol of moving forward as well. And, and that's probably the, the, the best part, so. Yeah, well, we are super excited to see everything come together. And um, we're definitely proud to have Sparrow among our membership and as a really important community partner. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you here next month on Leaf's Regional Resiliency Report.